everybody, Rose Matter here. Welcome to part 10 of my Dankenropa V3 Killing Harmony Let's Play. In the last episode, we had another murder, and unfortunately, it was one of my favorite characters, Ryoma. So we are going to be getting into the investigation for this episode and try and figure out what the hell happened. So without further ado, let's get into it. Ugh. Right off the bat, just seeing that is just really upsetting. I hate, I hate skeletons, so it's just weird to see, like, someone who was, like, you know, you kind of consider a friend, and now he's just a pile of bones. Ryoma's body is nothing more than a skeleton now, not even a shadow of what he was. <laughs> what the heck is that? Hey, is that really Ryoma? I didn't see the moment it happened, so I can't believe it. Uh, okay. I'm certain of it. Remember... Everyone watching the show witnessed it. We saw Ryoma become nothing but bones. Damn. I can't believe he died in such a gruesome way. Well. The water filled with blood so fast we didn't see the whole thing, thankfully. But the skeleton is unmistakably Ryoma's. Well, yeah, he's the only one that's that little. Jeez. Jeez, I know he wanted to die, but he didn't have to actually go and do it. No. No, I don't think that's right, Kaito. Really? You th well, I guess he didn't see it happen, but it's just like, really? You think he jumped into a tank with handcuffs on to kill himself? Ryoma wasn't trying to die. He said as much. He was jealous of us, who wanted to live. Huh? What do you mean he was jealous? Hmm. I'm positive that Ryoma wanted to join us. That's why he needed a reason to live. So that he could have- uh, so he could have the same feelings we do. So that he could have that reason to keep going to fight alongside us. Yeah, God, hearing that, that's just so much more upsetting. He was so cool! You could tell he wanted to, yeah, just like, try and change his life for the better. <laughs> then he was a real idiot. Who cares if you don't have a reason to live? Can't your reason for living be something simple like good food or your friends? Yeah. Damn it, that idiot. Like, I know Kaito, I know he means well, but sometimes he says things that is just... You can tell he doesn't quite understand, like, that mindset. Ryoma's belongings are all gathered together. His clothes, his monopad, the key to his room. Ah, oh, that's it. If we use this key, we can investigate Ryoma's room. Mm -hmm. What's in his room to investigate? Remember. The motive video. Oh, that's right. We should find out whose video Ryoma had. Oh. Then you think Ryoma was killed because of that video? No. I can't say for certain, but we should check, just in case. Although, he might have had my video. If that were the case, I might be a suspect. Well, no point thinking about that now. It's a bucket full of piranhas. Gonta said he picked all uh, up all the piranhas and put them here. I can't believe Gonta would do that with his bare hands. Uh, wait, yes I can. When I think Ryoma is inside their stomachs, I don't even feel like eating them. <laughs> Why would you even consider eating them in the first place? <laughs> Only the strong can survive in this world that Atua has created. Amen. Oh god, I hope it's I hope it's Angie. It's probably not Angie. It seems too likely and obvious, so it's not going to be her. But I I really don't care for her character at all. The least we can do is pray for Ryoma's soul so that he may enter Atua's kingdom. Come on, man. Can he really go there looking like this? But, but... Those piranhas sure were a miraculous mystery. Maybe Atua was behind those videos, too. Huh? What are you talking about? Uh... I noticed it right as the show started. What does the I feel like there are more piranhas today than yesterday when we were preparing. N no. More piranhas? Huh? What, did they multiply overnight? There's no way they could reproduce that fast. But, but... But... But compared to yesterday, the piranhas looked super crammed into that tank. So they looked more crammed together. Dear, dear. So it's somebody who had... Someone who had an idea of what the show was going to be, and I... Like, other than Angie and Himiko, who else could it be who would know about this whole thing? Because they were, they were keeping it a secret, as far as I know. The water was too murky, so I couldn't tell how many more piranhas there were. Oh my! But anyway, it was super, 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 super crammed. What a surprise! Super, 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 super cramped. Jeez, we get it. More piranhas than yesterday. There might be something to that. Where do they get the piranhas in the first place is what I'm wondering.
There's a square, pa uh, square pane of glass at the bottom of the water tank. It doesn't look like a broken piece. The other fragments are far more random than this. It's nearly impossible for the broken water tank to produce such a perfect square of glass. Then what exactly is this paint? Okay, it's gotta be part of Himiko's illusion, I'm guessing, or her trick, and how she got out. Handcuffs? Why are there handcuffs here? Unless there's like, is there like a secret, uh... I don't know, like, maybe instead of Ryoma being dunked into the water from the top, maybe he came out through the bottom and there's like a secret hole there that that pain is, uh is covering, and that's how Himiko got out? I don't know. Still locked, and there are small scratches on them. The cuffs appear to be stainless steel, so not too hard to scratch. They must have been scraping against something hard or sharp. Huh? What are those handcuffs? Were they in the tank? But I've never seen handcuffs in the warehouse. Where did they come from? It's true, there weren't any in the warehouse, so where did they come from? I'm guessing, yeah, it's like, it's gotta be Himiko's. They weren't in the warehouse. Another place that might have handcuffs is... Could it be he's a prisoner? Ryoma's lab wasn't just for the ultimate tennis pro, but also for the ultimate pri- Oh, didn't think about that. I just figured, like, Himiko had them for her act. So perhaps some element of that was in his lab as well. Alright, that's all I wanted to see around the water tank. Hey! You were helping set up the show, right, Kurumi? Did you hear anything about the trick? I do not agree. No, I did not hear a word. So, other than Angie and Himiko, you know, the suspicion would obviously fall on the people who were helping set up. Furthermore, my help consisted of sewing the banner and curtains. So I do not know the details of her trick. Well... I see. Yeah, Kurumi's one I definitely don't want to be the, the killer. This is the timer that was counting down the escape trick. I didn't realize it was also a timer to reveal Ryoma's body. I know this whole thing about the magic trick and stuff, this is- I feel like this, uh, this trial is gonna be very, like, Phoenix Wright-ish. Or I could be completely wrong, but it's just like, I feel like there's gonna be more than most other trials. When I stood on stage and looked up, the piranha tank was directly overhead. It was set up so the bottom would open when the timer had reached zero. The bottom is open now, and the tank is empty. It doesn't look as though it has a lid. I can see the ceiling straight through. And only the front side is glass. The other side are made, uh, sides are made of wood. So the piranha tank had no lid, and only the front was made of glass. Hey, so... Oh yeah, that tank was from Himiko's research lab. Ugh. Hey Kaito, you helped carry supplies for the show, right? Got it. Yeah, me, Kibo, Himiko, and Angie. It was a lot of work. But I just helped carry it. I wonder how they hung it from there. You know... It was a heavy tank full of water and piranhas. It couldn't have been easy to lift. So <laughs> Kaito did know about the piranhas too, obviously. It seems this is where the lightning... Uh, sorry, the lighting... Uh, Batan for the gym is attached. Ugh. Oh, Kurumi. It seems the it control seems. panel on the side of the stage allows you to raise and lower the Batan. It seems they lowered the Batan, attached the piranha tank to it, then raised it again. Hmm. I never knew lighting batans were sturdy enough to lift a tank like that. That is correct. Since it was built to lift heavy objects, it's probably quite sturdy. God, wouldn't that be a shocker if it turns out that Kaito was the murderer? It's just like, we just get this character that seems like he's gonna be an important part of the thing, and if he wasn't the one who was killed, maybe he's the one who will be executed. There's a curtain covering it, but I believe there's a window on the other side. What's the matter? Wouldn't it be crazy if Kaito ended up like the reason he is so into doing this investigation is because he's the murderer and he wants to maybe try and steer Shuichi towards someone else? I don't think so. I doubt that Kaito is the murderer, but I'm just like, given this game, I wouldn't be surprised. What's the matter? You want to check that window out? Okay. Uh, yeah, but... Ah. Oh, it's too high up to reach, huh? Yeah, it's pretty high. Even higher than the piranha tank. Higher than the piranha tank? Yeah. That's right. There was a ladder next to the stage. I'll go get it. Kaito quickly headed off the s to the stage. He returned carrying the ladder that was set up beside the stage over his shoulder. Hey, so but, you know, shouldn't the sidekick be the one bringing the ladder? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Thank you. 
After setting up the ladder on top of the stage, I climbed up the rungs. You can just barely reach the window with this. And if you open the curtain... Oh, the window is open! Ah, uh, yes, that's right. This looks out into the pool. If the window's open, does that mean the culprit used uh, it? Okay, I see, I see. So they're saying that maybe... Okay, so maybe Ryoma was drowned in the pool, like I said in the last episode. And then they managed to be able to climb up into that window and dump Ryoma. Oh, okay. So I was saying before about how Ryoma came... No. Shoot, I'm wondering if that would work. I was like, are they Im implying that they dumped Ryoma into the tank with the piranhas? So when the piranhas dropped in, he was in there with them. But if that's the case, wouldn't the piranhas have just eaten him inside the tank? Inside that little thing in the first place? I don't know. Hmm. The culprit may have gone in and out through this window. So what's on the other side of the window? I can't see much, but I think it's the pool. The pool, huh? I heard we had one here somewhere. All right, let's check it out later. The culprit probably went through there. Oh, wait. What is this? Hmm? What's up? Nothing. It just looks like marks on the window frame. The window frame has distinct abrasions, perhaps scratched by something. This might be related to the case. I should remember it. Okay, that is a pretty big deal for sure. I climbed down from the ladder to the stage. Hey! Right. You done investigating the window? Then I'll go put the ladder back. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you, Kaito. Jeez. Shouldn't the sidekick be doing this? He complained, but he still put the ladder back for me. All right. We all done here? Then let's go. Okay. Yeah, okay. Wait, can I not talk to the other people? So... So Himiko, um, Kibo... I'm trying to think of, like, the people that they said helped set up the stage. Kurumi I've already talked to. Although there are many unknown variables, the first thing we need to make clear is... When was Ryoma murdered? Well, in the middle of the show, obviously. The culprit knew how Himiko's trick worked and took advantage of it to kill Ryoma. In other words, everyone watching the show isn't suspicious. Oh, how convenient, Kaito. That he's the one that is like, well, I wasn't watching the show, so I'm fine. But if that's the case, wouldn't it... So, if someone did dump Ryoma's body into the tank, did that happen before the murder? Or before the show? Or did it happen during the show? Because if it happened during the show, then the people who who didn't watch the show, they're the ones that are more suspicious, right? But... Kaito, you didn't attend the show either, did you? Well, that's... N no, but I'm still not suspicious. I forgot a promise, so I was just eating breakfast. Of course. You got it? I'm not suspicious. Uh-huh. Dear. I do not understand how that explanation is supposed to convince me. Kibo does have a point. Alright, well, we might as well talk to everybody and get, uh, you know, what's the word I'm thinking of? Alibis? I never would have imagined such a cruel murder happening at such a fun show. <laughs> Why did the culprit commit such a barbaric act? Did they wish to see us panic? No. I don't think that was the sole motivation. There was some other reason for it. And the reason must be related to Himiko's magic act somehow. I see. So that means the culprit knew of Himiko's trick and made use of it, yes? If that's true, did Himiko tell someone? Someone who thinks the trick is actual magic? Well then. Since the show was used, we must inves investigate the trick as well. Kyo murmured almost to himself, then walked to the back of the stage. Hmm? Is there anything to investigate backstage? Um. Let's follow him. We should investigate the entire area anyway. We followed Kyo backstage. This is a pretty long rope. What was this used for? Hmm. I estimate it as roughly 65 feet in length. Huh? You can tell just by looking at it. But of course. I am well versed in ropes. I once visited a village where their use was common. <laughs> when it was time for me to leave, the women of the village all begged me. To I was going to say, I was like, him knowing about ropes. Of course, my mind goes somewhere, but I'm like, oh, maybe I'm just, a <laughs> uh, maybe I'm not too far off, actually. I find that deeply disturbing, but I have to focus on this investigation. Anyway, what is this rope? Could this be related to the case? Well, there's some water next to it, so it was obviously used. Maybe? Maybe not? 
There's a puddle behind the staircase. This isn't a puddle from where we broke the tank. The floor around it is completely dry. Perhaps someone who was wet was here doing something. That's true. Changing wet clothes? But... But how would you get from the water tank to this space behind the staircase? Could it be... This may be a vital clue for understanding the water uh, underwater escape trick. There's something here? Nah. Now, let's decide that after we search it. Investigate anything that stands out. There's nothing strange about it from behind. Other than the large size, it's a normal tank. I see. All sides of the tank seem to be made of a special type of glass. I see no hidden doors. Very mysterious. How, I wonder, did Himiko escape from the tank? That's right. Well, if we figure it out easily, it wouldn't be a magic trick. However... I believe that if we figure out the route Himiko took, we will discover how Ryoma got in there. That's true. There's a high probability they used the same route. To reveal how Ryoma got into the tank. I need to reveal how Himiko managed to get out of it. Staircase goes up to the top of the stairs. Uh, stage, sorry. Inspecting it closely, I can see some places on the side are wet. That might have something to do with the puddle next to it. I've investigated just about everything to do with the stage, but I still don't know how the trick was performed. Hey, so... Hey, how long are you gonna investigate here? We still gotta find the culprit, you know? Come on, let's go. Dude, I have so many people I Kaito. still need to talk to. Oh, wait, Kaito. I get it, we're on a time limit, but, like, we gotta... If I hadn't talked to Kyo, I wouldn't have gone to the hey, back of the stage. Degenerate male. If Himiko says it's magic, then it's magic. Got it? I'll use my Neo Akito to obliterate any degenerate males who bullies Himiko. But if we don't understand the magic trick, how can we possibly survive the trial? Uh, of course, Tenko, nothing really important to say. My magic was supposed to make everyone smile. Himiko! Don't worry, everyone is smiling. Uh, I don't think any of us can smile right now. Um... Himiko, if it's alright, are you ready to talk about your underwater escape trick? We need to understand how your trick works if we're going to solve this mystery. What are you saying? There's no trick to my underwater escape act. It was magic. Come on, man. You still saying that? Do you understand the situation we're in? Stop it. No matter how much you guys threaten me, my answer won't change. It was magic. Huh? But... I'll protect you! Okay, your time's up. The Q&A session is now over. <laughs> Unless you want to feel the full volcanic breath of my new Aikido. Man, this guard is more strict than the security at idol events. Yeah, she's gonna be a tough nut to crack, but... Ugh, ow. That's right, we need to ask Angie about the stage. Angie. She's not gonna be much help either. Angie, I wanted to ask you some questions about the stage. I... Yep, I was in charge of all the art. I even built and painted the stage. Then... Then do you know anything about Himiko's trick? How it worked, perhaps? No? Nope. nope, I don't know the trick. Himiko only said it was magic. I see. I suppose you didn't tell Angie the secret either. Uh, By the way, you asked other people to help you with the preparations, right? Uh, yep. Yep, we started the prep work yesterday. Lots of people helped out. Like when we were moving the heavy tank and the stairs from Himiko's research lab. Yeah. Me and Kibo helped with that. The tank had a pulley, but because it was so huge, it was still a lot of work. Right, right. And I asked Kurumi to sew the curtains because I hate sewing. Thanks. So basically, it's all thanks to Atua that the show is a success. Nah. No, it's because of all of us. Was it really a success? Uh, By um, the way, were the piranhas your idea? Because. On its own, the Underwater Escape Act is no different from a normal magic show. So divine! I thought it would make the show more exciting and divine if we used piranhas. Atua has spoken. That's what Atua told me. So Atua gave you that kind of advice too, does he? Um... And about the piranha tank and the timer, those were from Himiko's lab, correct? Of course, of yep, course! Yep, yep. According to the piranha tank's manual, it's synced up with the timer. When the timer goes off, the bottom of the piranha tank will open automatically. Okay, so is the bottom that glass pane that's in the, um... On the bottom of the tank, that must be the bottom of the piranha tank. Uh, I was thinking it was a whole thing about like a se like it was hiding a secret door or something, but I must be wrong. And then? And right when we finished the prep work and we're about to take a break. Yeah! Gota captured us so we couldn't rehearse all. Uh, so we couldn't rehearse at all. 
Jeez. When Gonta let us go, it was already nighttime, so we couldn't go back to the gym. You know... Oh yeah, you can't enter the gym at nighttime. Yeah, yeah. So we decided to come to the gym today, before the morning announcement. Thank you! Himiko and I were waiting for the gym to open. Oh, I was so relieved the set was intact. So no one could have snuck into the gym before those two got there. <gasps> What's up, Shuichi? Are you worried because of this confusing incident? But, but... Don't worry, it'll be fine. Huh? What? Atua has spoken. You have nothing to worry about. Huh? Nothing to worry about. No, no. Nothing can escape Atua's sight, not even the culprit. <laughs> Atua is truly a defined force to be reckoned with. Angie is starting to sound more and more creepy. Oh. No, I'm a dummy. No, that was uh, that no, the that wasn't part of this cuz yeah, you can see the doors open right there. Plus it wouldn't make any sense if this glass pane from the bottom dropped down. You got to risk it, you know, hitting Himiko and knocking her out. So that was stupid of me to assume that was the case. Hey. Hey Flemwad, there's something I need you to tell me. That's not a very polite way to ask for something. You know, it's got nothing to do with the incident, but I heard Gonta captured you guys last night. <laughs> the hell was that about? I was running around, so I got no clue what happened. Got it. Oh yeah, tell me too. I was also running, so I still don't know what went on. That kidnapping, the, that's got us that's got to play into this somehow. It it seems I wonder if that was planned from the start. I don't know. Maybe uh maybe what's his face? Maybe Kokichi was behind it all and he had going to capture everybody. He says to take the you know, the monopads. But maybe also he wanted to set this whole thing up with Ryoma as well? I don't know. How didn't you escape from Gonta? She's not strong enough to fight- <laughs> Oh yes, right, Gonta was talking about how she used her, like, feminine charms on him. Why you? Chop chop, you slimy shit. Uh, well, um... I suppose you could say that Gonta was tricked into kidnapping us. The first ones to get captured were Kibo, Kiyo, Samugi, Tenko, and I. Kimiko and Angie were brought in later. Huh? From the gym, right? Okay. Exactly. And Kokichi left the room after, around 9 p.m. So it could be could be Kokichi, it could be any of the people that weren't captured by Gonta that would have had time to set all this stuff up, because Ryoma wasn't captured either, so I don't know, there's a lot of contingencies in this one. They must have been brought in about five minutes before that. If I remember We were all forced to participate in Gonta's insect meeting group. We were free to, uh, about an hour into nighttime, around 11 p.m. I see. So from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m., everyone there had an alibi. And then there's the whole thing about how the, um, you know, details of the case, there's no time of murder, like a time of death, I should say. Um, so that could play into this, because if we know when that time of death is, it would be easier to figure out who the killer is based on all these things. And then those people without an alibi are me, Kurumi, Maki, and Ryoma. And then Maki's been acting weird too. <laughs> I see you've learned what an alibi is thanks to the previous incident. But what the fuck is this insect meet and greet bullshit? Why? By the way, Mew, how were you able to get away from Gonta? What? Uh, uh, well... I, uh, had to use my secret woman weapon, and let's just leave it at that. Huh? Secret woman weapon? Wait! Hey, what's a secret woman weapon? <laughs> okay. Shuichi, you're a detective, you figure it out. <laughs> Is she trying to laugh it off? Come on, man. Shuichi, let's just leave her be. Listening to her will just tire you out. You're right. You're probably right. Perhaps it's better to get the truth out of her at the class trial. Yep, so that does definitely have something to do with it, of course. Like I thought. If Himiko doesn't know how the trip works, we won't know how Ryomo was killed, right? But with the way she is, how do we convince her? Could it be? Oh, what if... Ryoma was a former apprentice of Himiko's master and vowed revenge on him. And he murdered a lookalike of himself in order to sabotage her show. Yeah. Or something like that. It's happened before, probably. Alright, Samugi. Moving on. Hey. I'm glad Himiko made this game more difficult. Now I won't be nearly as bored. Alright! Time to get uh, time to work hard to solve this mystery. Get ready, culprit, because here I come. Uh, I bet Kokichi probably isn't the killer either. How can this be? Gonta could have saved him. No, Gonta should have saved him. What happened? Gonta, what's wrong? <sighs> when Piranhas attack Ryoma, if Gonta had dived into tank. Well, it's nice to see someone gives a damn about Ryoma's death. 
Then Gonta could have helped Ryoma, but Gonta got scared. Too scared to do anything. Gonta! Sorry. Idiot. Gonta, really sorry. Come on, man. A man shouldn't apologize so easily. And even if you had jumped in, they just would have eaten you, too. That's true. And from what I read in the Monokuma file, you couldn't have saved him anyway, Gonta. Huh? Really? Does it say that in the Monokuma file? You know... You haven't even read the Monokuma file yet? Gonta... No, Gonta not really understand it. Gonta not smart enough to be helped. Dumbass! What are you talking about? If you've got time to apologize, you've got time to read the file. If you think you can't help, then work till you can. That's what you can do. You're right. That's right, Gonta. You're a huge help. There's some information that only you know, after all. Huh? Information only Gonta know? Remember. Remember, during the show, you went up on the stage? That was about 20 seconds before the piranhas dropped, right? Uh, yeah, cause Gonta worry about Himiko. Could it be? Did you see inside the tank? Did you see Himiko or Ryoma? No. No, Gonta see no one in tank. Gonta kind of surprised. But you know. But when the piranhas were dropped and the curtains opened, Ryoma was in the tank, right? Um. Yeah, that right. So... Then, when did Ryoma get in there? You didn't see that happen? Oh, Gonta, Gonta don't see. know. Everyone see Ryoma and Tank when piranhas drop in. After that... Sorry! Sorry, Gonta should have watched Tank better. Dumbass. Okay, so we're gonna have to unpack all that stuff that he saw. Like I said, a man shouldn't apologize so easily. Um... Uh, Gonta keeps putting himself in situations, <laughs> like during the... In these past two trials that have been... Suspicious? This one, not so much. Like, you can tell he was just trying to help, so I'm wondering maybe if the glass is, like, one-way glass where if you see it from a certain angle, like, you can't see in, but the person in the tank can see out? You know... I don't know. But this is a problem. Now I'm even more stumped. Even if Himiko disappearing was part of the underwater escape act, how did Ryoma get into the tank? Was that part of Himiko's trick? I'm positive that mystery will be an important part of this case. I believe we've investigated everything we need to for now. Well, our investigation's almost over, so who's the culprit? Well, we still no. gotta go check out the pool, right? I can't say for certain yet. There are other areas I need to investigate. Come on, man. What, you still don't know? I never thought detective work would be such work. So where else do we gotta investigate? So we gotta go to Ryoma's room, and we gotta go to the pool. That's... First, the pool next to the gym. They're connected by the window above the stage, so that needs to be looked at. That's true. After that, I want to go to Ryoma's room and find out which mode of video he had. Then, I want to investigate the Ultimate Tennis Pro's lab. I've deduced that the handcuffs we found in the water tank probably came from there. Mm. Is that everything? Ah. Uh. Last of all, to the Ultimate Magician's lab. I want to know more about Himiko's trick. If we go there, I'm sure there'll be some kind of clue. Hmm. So we still got a lot to do then, huh? Good luck, Shuichi. After all, it's gonna be you doing all the heavy lifting here. You're right. Ah, uh, right. Don't screw around! What do you mean, right? Are you saying I'm useless? Is there a right way to respond to that? Alright, let's get out of here. So this is Himiko's research lab. What were we gonna investigate again? Hmm. The trick Himiko used in her magic show. I need to figure out how it worked. You know... Well, you say that, but what if it was real magic with no tricks or mechanisms? That's... Well, that would be a problem. But it's not just about the trick. I need to ask that guy some questions. Shuichi! Shuichi, did you want to ask me something? Okay. I'll tell you anything you want to know. You are my favorite, after all. When he says that, it sounds like he means the opposite. It makes me nervous. Hey! I do, actually. It's about when we were kidnapped by Gonta yesterday. You snuck into our mo- uh, sorry. You snuck into our rooms to steal our motive videos, right? But is that all you were doing? You came back pretty late. I see. I see. You want to know my alibi for nighttime yesterday? It's a good question to ask. The gym is off limits during nighttime, so Ryoma was probably killed before or after. Which makes nighttime yesterday so suspicious, since everyone was doing their own thing. Hey! And what were you doing then? Um... It would be easier if I just explained step by step what happened while I was out last night. After you regain consciousness, Shuichi, Gonta brought Himiko and Angie. 
That was about 5 minutes before 9pm. Right after that, I left Gonta's lab and headed toward the dorms. I thought I would be back in an hour, the start of nighttime, but something happened. Huh? Something happened? Right when I got to the entrance hall, Kurumi spotted me. That was right after I left Gonta's lab, so it was right around 9pm. She started throwing questions at me left and right, asking if I was up to no good. Haha, <laughs> love you Kurumi. Then she started criticizing my behavior and lecturing me on my manners and relationships. Hmm, can you believe that? I mean, who does she think she is? My mom or something? Well, yeah, she is. She's all of our moms. If I remember correctly... <laughs> yeah, didn't you ask Kurumi to be your mom earlier? That's so mean. She just kept talking, then finally let me go at 10pm when nighttime rolled around. Huh? A whole hour? <laughs> well, only the first half hour was a lecture, then we played tag for the other half. She was starting to bore me, so I turned around to leave, and then... Please wait. Stop right there. Our conversation is not over yet. I don't gotta listen to you. You're not worthy of lecturing the ultimate supreme leader. <laughs> Come on, Miss Maid. Catch me if you can. That is... Is that a request? So that means... And then, I guess Kurumi decided to take Tag super seriously. Like... I feel like Kurumi could be used as an ax like as an accessory to murder because she just does whatever people tell her to do. So it could be there could be a situation where she unknowingly helps murder someone, but she doesn't realize it, and that would be so upsetting. I tried my best, but in the end she caught me a little before 10 p.m. I'm disappointed. Then she started lecturing me again and let me go when nighttime started. So, do your alibi still hold up, even when she was chasing you around? Maybe. We ran into each other a bunch of times, so yeah, they should hold up. Then from 9pm until nighttime, both Kokichi and Kurumi have alibis. <laughs> After Kurumi let me go, I finally went to the dorms and collected everyone's videos. But by the time I returned to Gonta's lab, it was already 11pm. Then from 10 to 11, he doesn't have an alibi. Ah. Oh yeah, I did see something odd when Kurumi was lecturing me. Huh? Something odd? I saw a half-naked girl wandering around the courtyard in her underwear. It was too dark for me to make out who it was, but I saw her walk around for a bit. I wonder who it was. What? Okay, I'm wondering if that was, uh, was that Mew using her feminine, you know, her secret weapon? <laughs> That's interesting. By the way. By the way, you didn't get captured by Gonta yesterday, did you, Kaito? Where were you, and what were you doing? I was running around the whole time. I hid in bathrooms, bedrooms, all over the school. Mm. I see. Hmm. What are you doing here? I was gonna say the same thing. Um. Well, I'm investigating. I know I'm playing, but it's plain to see I'm investigating. Uh, okay. uh is that so? Hey, so... So, did you find any clues? Uh. I'm still thinking about that. Hmm. I don't think you can uncover clues just by thinking about them. No. Um, no. In fact, I still haven't found anything. Yeah. Then get to it. Looking around is how you find clues. But... But I think leaving that guy alone is just plain bad. Samugi gave Kokichi a, me a meaningful glare. Hey! Or glance. Jeez, sorry guys. So I've decided to plainly keep an eye on him. That way, even plain old me can help out. Alright, now it's time to actually investigate the room here. This is a big cage. I might fit inside this. This has nothing to do with the case. I just wanted to look at the pretty birds, I guess. Yeah. Several swords stabbed into a human-sized box. But if there was a person inside, they would come out just fine. That's a trick. Uh, that's a trick, I think. It says nothing to do with the case. There's probably one thing in here that I need to investigate, but I'm gonna investigate everything. Because that's what a detective does. Is this used for magic tricks too? I've seen it in magic shows before. This has nothing to do with the case. Alright, I'm guessing this is probably the thing I need to check out. It's a huge water tank. It looks like the one that was used in Himiko's show. So... It looks like the same tank Himiko used in the show. I guess this one was a backup. God damn, how big is this place? That's what Himiko told me in Kibo when we carried the tank out of here. Then... Then perhaps if we investigate this tank, we can learn the secret of the trick. Encouraged, I began walking around the tank. I was looking for anything that could be a switch or mechanism. Hmm. What's this? There's a segment of the tank near the top that opens up, but why open up there? 
Wait, perhaps it isn't random. The segment had to open up here. And then there's this kind of cage-looking thing over here. Can I investigate this? Alright, uh, is there anything else here? But you know. Even if it's to solve the case, revealing Himiko's tricks is... Well, it makes things kind of boring. Huh? Kaito, are you the type who wants to believe in magic? Oh. Ooh, Kaito believes in Himiko's magic. Idiot. That's not what I mean. I was just thinking that her tricks are like magic that brings smiles to people. I see. Oh, yeah. I guess you could think about it that way. Yeah. Besides, it's just like my dream to go to space. I believe I can travel across the Milky Way. I believe I will meet aliens. Flying around space with thoughts like that is the true spirit of adventure. Ah, uh, so it's like that. <laughs> Kaito, that's... You're so The dumb. stupidest thing I've ever heard. Your idealistic dreams won't help this situation. What? Hey, who are you calling stupid? Uh, uh, no need to yell. Alright, so can we go? Yeah, okay, I guess it was just the water tank we need to investigate. Okay, so next is going to be the pool. Um, gotta go to Ryoma's lab. And then we have to go to Ryoma's room. Oh, there's something in there. I don't think was there before. Oh, and the rope, right? The rope that was at the... Um... So maybe that's how they lowered his body in. There's an inner tube floating in the pool. It looks like a big, sturdy rubber one. I see. Let me guess, some idiots didn't clean up after themselves. Rise and shine oh, jeez. <laughs> scared me. <laughs> uh, I don't care for these guys. They just seem to stop, like, you know, the story. Don't look at us. I don't like water. I prefer juice. We get heavier when our cotton absorbs water. It makes losing weight a nightmare. I want to play in the water with everyone. It sounds fun. Ah. You know, Mono Dam might be onto something. I kind of want to go in the pool now. Yeah, who cares about losing weight? You stupid idiots! We're not here to play. We're here to smack these bastards into the pits of hell. We're the Mono Cubs, the meanest, nastiest, cruelest mascots around. Dumbass! If you don't get it, I'll throw y'all into the pool myself. Ah! Please don't. Can't we all get along? Manasuka, please stop. Can't we all just get along? What? You saying that if we don't get along, I'll end up like Mono Kid? Right now. So long. Alright, that provided nothing of use. Hmm. Hmm. So then it was one of us that put the inner tube there, not the Mono Cubs? Okay, that served one purpose. Well, it doesn't matter. The inner tube probably isn't related to the case isn't related to the case. If it were just for playing around, then why is there a rope tied to it? What could that be used for? That is intriguing. Wait, what? We're not gonna- that doesn't count as, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? As evidence? Seems like a pretty big thing. You can see the gym's window over there. That's the window we investigated from the top of the stage in the gym. I mean, it's pretty high up. You wouldn't be able to reach it with just a ladder. I okay. agree. The ladder only barely reached the window, and it was on the stage. Hmm. If that's the case, it might have been hard for someone to have gone through there. Okay. Yeah, you might be right. Okay, so we gotta figure out how they were able, someone was able to use that. It's a large diving board. It looks like something you find at a resort. Nothing about it has changed. Oh yeah, there was this whole thing too about like the parameters of uh, of the pool. Oh, all right, here we go. Oh, no jumping into the pool, especially at nighttime. Whoa, Whoa where'd you come from? Yeah. I mean, yeah. jumping itself is fine. If you want to jump in front of a car or a train, that's on you. No, no, no. But the pool is off limits at nighttime. See, no swimming at nighttime. That's that would be a violation, right? If anyone violates school regulation, a campus-wide siren will blare. And then that person will be ripped apart by the exosols. What? You'd go that far? Oh, yeah. 
that. Well, so far as this, uh, so far the siren hasn't gone off, so no one's needed to be ripped apart. <laughs> Yet. Um, since that's the case, can we assume no one was in the gym or pool at nighttime? Oh, yeah! Well, at the very least, no one alive. Okay. So that kind of condenses things down. No swimming at nighttime. That might just play into this case. So this is the pool. It's not much like a school pool. So that window we investigated above the stage in the gym connects to here, right? All right. The culprit probably got in and out from here. All right, investigate every nook and cranny. You're not gonna do it yourself? Alrighty. So what else haven't I investigated? Oh yeah, a storage room. This is the pool's equipment shed. I'll take a look inside, just in case. Huh? Is that... An electric air pump? I see. You could easily fill a large inner tube with this. Hmm. There doesn't seem to be anything else worth inspecting. Building in this, uh, this building is the school building. That must mean the window goes somewhere. Most of the windows are blocked off, but that one looks normal. What room has that window? That's a point of interest. Oh, bits of fabric. Jeez, totally missed that. Oh, we got some blood there. There's something else floating in the pool. Hmm. It looks like a little piece of fabric. Jeez. It's just trash, right? Nothing to be worried about. Oh, is that blood or is that just the uh, shadow of it? I can't quite no. tell. We're looking for the culprit. We don't have time to pick up trash. Uh, okay. uh, yes, but perhaps it's just my intuition, but it does bother me. I should learn to trust it sometimes. My intuition is the ultimate detective. Hey, so Shuichi, does this pool really have anything to do with the case? We got all psyched up about it, but it doesn't seem like there were any clues here. But well, that inner tube is still bothering me. I don't know what it tells us, but I feel like it's related to this case. But you know, but you know, if that inner tube is related to the case, the culprit is pretty careless. If it was related to the case, why didn't they clean it up? So... Just leaving it sitting out there like that? Don't you think that's straight up careless? No. No, even if they wanted to put away, they couldn't. There's no pole or anything around here that you could use to get the inner tube. Remember, the water level is so low, you couldn't grab the tube even if you did manage to pull it closer. But you know. And why not just jump in and fish it out by hand? Oh. Oh, that's right. They couldn't get in the water. Couldn't get in the water. Yes, I suppose you could think of it that way. Oh man, that no. just made things more confusing than ever. Well, we can't stay here forever, right? Let's go check out the other places. All right. There's no time to waste. Isn't that right, sidekick? You're right. Yeah, sure. That's the thing about the investigating is it just leaves more questions than answers. The more you investigate, the more confused you tend to be. At least that's the case with me. All right, now let's check out Ryoma's room. Oh, there we go. So... This is Ryoma's room, huh? So where's his video? I don't see it sitting out anywhere. Maybe he put it on his bookcase? Kaito opened all the drawers one by one, checking each of them. That's weird. I can't find it anywhere. You're right. I see, so we can't find it. That's all right. That's a clue in itself. Huh? What do you mean? Hey! You see, if we suppose the motive for the crime was the video, there's a high possibility that Ryoma had the culprit's motive video. Remember. If their motive video was left at the scene, they would be immediately suspicious. There's no reason the culprit would leave behind that kind of incriminating evidence. Ah. That's true. Okay. And the video is not in the room, which means... Got it. So it's just like we thought. That video was the motive. Okay. Yes, that's the best explanation I can think of. That's my sidekick. All right, just what I'd expect from my top sidekick. Oh Shuichi. yeah, that's right. I forgot he had Kaitos. What's the matter, Shuichi? No. Oh, nothing. So... By the way, I was thinking. 
I mean... Maybe we should... Maybe we all should have watched those Moda videos after all. Huh? What? Nah. They showed the most important people to us, right? That's right. So maybe we should have watched them. Without looking away from the truth. I mean... At the time, I agree with Kibo, but after thinking about it, I changed my mind. That's right. And if we were worried about watching them alone, we could have just watched them together. Uh, watch um, them together? Got it. Yeah, we should have all gathered together and watched all the videos. Share everybody's motives. Even if we're something you can't bear by yourself, it'd be possible with everyone. Yeah. And that's that whole thing about, you know, like not turning away from the truth like Shuichi wants to do. That's what cooperation is, right? Ah. Uh, that's what Kokichi was trying to do. Huh? Huh? Hey. Kokichi was trying to get us to participate in a motive uh, video viewing party of sorts. That's why he forced us into the same room. Hmm. Do you think that was his way of cooperating? Do you think the same way? Nah. No. If that's what he wanted, he could have just asked us. Jeez. <laughs> that's what a normal person would have done, but the thing is, he's not normal. That's right. Maybe he did want us to cooperate, but there's no way to know for sure. He'd never tell us. It's true. It's impossible to know what Kokichi is thinking. But I suppose he could have been acting in our favor for once. That's an interesting possibility, but I never know with that kid. <laughs> Kokichi's just not normal. Jeez, what a pain. Let's go! Well, forget about Kokichi. We gotta focus on the investigation. Let's move on. Alright, so last place to check out is going to be Ryoma's place. Alright. Well, there's Ko <sighs> There's Ryoma's, but... I'm wondering, should I see if I can... See if I can talk to Maki, because I really need to like get her alibi if she's got one. But I'm guessing she's not gonna want to talk to me. Oh, ah, okay. Looks like Kurumi might have had the same idea as me. Hey, Maki, what are you doing here? Um, earlier you said you weren't going to help us investigate. Were you serious about that? So what? You'll be fine even if I don't help, right? You're the detective, not me. Or do you think you can't solve this case on your own? Uh, um... That's completely different. This is... <laughs> That's pretty harsh, but my sidekick is working his ass off. Huh? Sidekick? Got it. Yep, Shuichi's my sidekick now. Hey. Shouldn't it be the other way around? The dumb one should be the sidekick. So... The dumb one? I'm more of a scientist type of guy, so this stuff really isn't my thing. Well... Wouldn't being a scientist be helpful for an investigation? You know... More importantly, why have you been here the whole time? Is there a reason? Like I know. Why do you care? No. Because it's been bothering me. You've been in here ever since this room opened up. Almost as if you're keeping watch, making sure no one else enters. I don't understand. Is this an interrogation? No. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. I just want you to talk to me, Maki. This has nothing to do with the case. Please, tell me so. Hey! It's true you don't have to help us if you don't want to. Is that alright? But you should at least cooperate with our investigation. Because? Because all of our lives are on the line. Is that so? Even if I did cooperate, I wouldn't be any help. Mostly because I've been in here for the last several days. I've only gone back to the, my dorm at night to shower, including last night. Hey! Then, can I ask you this? Did you see Gonta at all last night? Gonta was searching the grounds last night, trying to capture all of us. Why? How were you able to avoid being caught? I see. Gonta did stop by, but I managed to chase him off somehow. All I did was tell him, If you lay a hand on me, you'll choke to death on your own tongue. That's all. Hmm. So Gonta got scared off by that? Well, I guess he would hold back against a girl. Also, Maki is terrifying, so I don't blame him. As I listened to Maki's testimony, a question grew in my mind. Why did Maki not want to leave so badly? What reason did she have for that? Hey. Are we done here? You're wasting your time talking to me. I don't know anything. Ah. Okay, I'm done here. Huh? You are? That's right. Well, her alibi's a little shaky, but I don't think she killed Ryoma. That's what my instincts are telling me. <laughs> this was also the same guy who was like, who looks at Maki and be like, yeah, you'd be able to handle yourself in a fight, or like, yeah, I think you're capable of doing some violent things. Hey, so... But if you remember anything, be sure to tell Shuichi, okay? I believe in He's you. He's my sidekick, you know? He's pretty good. In the end, the only thing we were able to get out of Maki was she was here the whole time. But no one else can verify that testimony. That might be a problem later.
Hmm. What are you doing here, Kurumi? Do you agree? We all agree to investigate with at least one other person present, yes? As she spoke, she glanced towards Maki. Hmm. Ah, so you're staying with Maki. Got it. That's good thinking. Hey, once we're done with the trial, can I get a massage? May I? But of course, since you're here, Shuichi, may I ask you a question? The time of death was not provided, so I'm questioning everyone in order to determine it. She what is a smart cookie. When was the last time you saw Ryoma alive? Uh, right um... before I was kidnapped by Gonta yesterday, around 6 in the evening. So... The last time I saw him was way before then. I didn't see him at all yesterday, actually. Then. Then you are fine, Kaito. What's important is the last time someone witnessed him alive. Wait. Oh, uh... Wait, I'm trying to think. Wasn't when Gonta... When Gonta, like, cornered us outside? Wasn't Kaito with me and then, like, Ryoma saw us and said that he was trying to run away from... Uh, so, is that true? Or am I misremembering things? I thought the whole thing was, like, when Kaito came to my dorm to be like, hey, uh, Gonta's trying to capture everybody, and then we ran outside. I'm pretty sure Kaito was there, too. Or was he not? Was it just me and Ryoma? And then... Gonta captured me, but Ryoma got away. Hey! Last time someone witnessed Ryoma alive. That is correct. Gonta was the last one to see him alive at around 8 p.m. yesterday. Ryoma managed to avoid being captured by him using his uh, Shikuchi method. So Ryoma was still running around after I got captured. Yes, of course. Furthermore, 30 minutes earlier, Mew saw Ryoma as she was fleeing from Gonta. Hmm. In that case, Gonta's testimony is highly credible. Yes. Yes. We at least know that Ryoma was alive yesterday until around 8 p.m. Okay. So I gotta try and, like, remember the whole thing that happens beforehand. I might be mistaken. I don't think Kaito- now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think Kaito was with me outside. I think it was just me and Ryoma before I got captured uh, by Gonta. But all of that will be brought up during the investigation. Or the class trial, I should say. Alright, now on to what we were originally going to do, which was going into his lab. The Ultimate Tennis Pro's Lab. If I'm right, then the handcuffs that were found in the tank came from here. And if the handcuffs came from here, that means the culprit was here as well. They may have left a trace of evidence. Hmm. This room is a little different from when we were here before. It feels off. What's the matter? What's the matter, Shuichi? No. Uh, nothing. Anyway, let's figure out the handcuffs. We should take care of that problem first. Uh, was this? I'm trying to remember if the um the net looked like this beforehand or not. It's been a while since I've been in here, so I can't remember exactly what everything looks like. Okay, the shower room. I'm trying to get to the shower room. There we go. Oh yeah, I never actually was in here, was I? Yep, there are the handcuffs, and one is missing. This is the first time I've been in here. It's a shower room, but it feels less like the ultimate tennis bros. Hmm. And more like the ultimate prisoner's lab. Hey, so... Do you think it was made that way on purpose? Did they remodel the shower just for that? Okay. Yeah, I think they did. Ugh. Jeez, Monokuma's got bad taste. Well, we already knew that. I was like, then again, I'm talking about how Ryoma was, like, drowned in the pool. He could have just as easily been drowned in, like, this thing. In the sink, or in... I hate to say it, but he's so little. <laughs> you wouldn't have to drown him in a lot of water. <laughs> this is a pretty big stone sink. You could fill it up with a lot of water. Hmm. What's this? Hmm. Scratches on the stone, like something was scraped against it. Oh, maybe that was him, like, he was being drowned by someone, and he was, like, scratching, like, trying to, like, get his grip, trying to get free. So... You're right. What made them? Hmm. These scratch marks are clearly not natural. They must have been made by some kind of- oh, metal. Oh, so maybe someone- because they were scratches on the handcuffs, so maybe someone handcuffed him, dunked him in the water, and his, like, he was scratching the handcuffs against the bottom? That is interesting. There they are, the handcuffs. Um, Look, Kaito, handcuffs hanging on the wall. 
Well, they look like the ones in the tank. Or wait, are they the same? Because... I think so. Here, look. Remember. See? One empty hook. The handcuffs we found must have been hung here. That means the culprit was definitely here. Oh, I wonder, is this the window that looks out into the, uh... Probably not. Into, like, the pool area. This window has no vines or barbed wires or bars blocking it. Could it be... Oh, it is, too! Well, isn't that convenient? There was that one window I could see from the pool area. This might be it. I'm gonna open it and check. Yep. Just as I yes, this is definitely it. The window you can see from the pool is the window to Ryoma's lab. Third floor is high up, but if they aimed well, they could reach the pool. But Monokuma said you can't go in the pool at nighttime, right? I was like, did someone manage to fire him from his like across the pool into the uh, into the window on the other side? That seems a little unlikely. Maybe what that that's what the uh, the inner tube was for. So that way, like nobody, they said the whole thing. Monokuma said, uh, "It's not a violation if you're dead," because <laughs> his whole thing is like, so nobody violated that rule about being in the pool area at nighttime. And he's like, "Well, not if you're dead." So maybe technically, because Ryoma was already dead and his body was in the pool area, he doesn't technically violate the rule. Yeah, yep, yeah, exactly. No one alive. There we go. But you know, why did he say no one alive? Is that all right? I believe he was hinting that a dead person wouldn't be considered to be breaking the rules, which means it's possible a dead body was in the gym or the pool at nighttime. You know, so there's a chance Ryoma was carried to the gym after he was killed. But you know, there's no point carrying his body there if you can't even get in. Hmm. I don't know if it's safe to say there was no point. Hmm? Wait a sec. What's this? Huh? Huh? Hey, so look, there's some weird scratches on the window frame. Oh, good job, Kaito. You actually were useful for something. You're right. Yeah, it's as if something scraped against it. These marks are similar to the ones that were on the gym's window frame. I'm positive these marks aren't the result of opening and closing the window normally. This window frame is sturdy as well. The gym's window frame was the same way. It looks like it would hold even with a lot of weight on it. Shuichi! Now you understand, right, Shuichi? Huh? What? Got it. How amazing I am to have noticed such a super, ultra-important clue. It's all in a day's work Luminary for Kaito Momoda, Luminary of the Stars. I mean, I found a pretty important clue too, but I won't say that. <laughs> Shuichi, you found lots of clues. Don't, uh, don't sell yourself short. Okay, I'm wondering if- is this, uh, is there anything else I could possibly investigate? We came here to confirm my suspicion about the handcuffs found in the tank. But we found even more important clues than I expected. Together with the fact this is Ryoma's own lab? There are too many points of concern to be mere coincidence. It must be important information. No, sorry. It must be important evidence. Hey! Seems like you figured something out. You seem more confident. All right! All right, then on to the next place. There's no point staying here. Okay. Right. Wait, what is the next place, though? Ah! What, what haven't I investigated yet? I'm trying to think. Hey, so... So, okay, so where should we go? Whoa! Oof! As he came out of the shower room, Kaito tripped and fell to the ground. Hold up! The hell? Something's caught on my leg. That's... Oh, it looks like cable. Ah. Is this for the tennis net? Man, whoever left this here should have put it in the corner. Wait, the tennis net? Hmm. Ah, okay, so it wasn't just me. The, the net did look different. I see, so that's why this room felt odd. I should investigate this in detail. The reason I thought this room felt off is because of the net. When I came here last time, the tennis net was up. Okay. But now the cable's been removed. Uh -huh. So, like, someone took the cable off? Why would they do that? Hey! Kaito, can you help me? I want to measure how long this cable is. Hmm? No need. It's just about 50 feet long. Huh? What? <laughs> Everyone here apparently knows how to measure rope just by looking at it. 
Oh, I was in the tennis club till middle school, so I know how long the cable is. Uh, um, you were in the tennis club? That's right. That's why it pissed me off so much that Ryoma was acting like that. Hey! Did you know Ryoma from before? Oh, snap, were they... Maybe that was one of the people that uh, Ryoma was talking about during his social uh, social time. Ah. I never met him, but I heard a lot about him. You know... I mean, these days, there's no one who's played tennis that hasn't heard of him. He's been a tennis legend since middle school. He was like a hero to every tennis kid. Jeez. And then once I finally got to meet him, he became a coward. It pissed me off so much, I ended up being too hard on him. Damn. But regretting that now won't help. There's nothing I can do. So... so what's suspicious about the length of the cable? Did something about it bother you? No. No, nothing, sus uh, nothing specific. I was just checking. Hmm. So detectives get bothered by small details, huh? <laughs> like an overbearing mother-in-law nitpicking a young wife. Uh, um... What is that analogy? I was gonna say, being an astronaut, I feel like Kaito should worry about the little details because there's all those things where it's like if you get even one measurement off or like if you do one little thing wrong, so many things could go wrong. So you think he would understand that, but he seems basically... He just looks at the big picture and he doesn't worry about that stuff. Oh. All right. I felt like a quick investigation. Already tired of investigating? Oh, you've been tired of it for a while now? Well, that's how it goes. Investigations aren't all that fun, you see. <laughs> it's like he, even he knows. We're just doing this to get to the class trial. But it's a necessary step before we can move on to the main event. Kind of like searching the internet for that perfect <laughs> porno video. Well, I wouldn't. That's not the analogy I would make. In fact, some people think the search is the best part. Weird, huh? Anyway, the class trial is starting soon. Please gather at the Shrine of Judgment in the courtyard. <laughs> See you later. Shuichi. Looks like it's time, bro. Uh, okay. Yeah. Dumbass. Hey, why do you look so worried now? Don't worry about it. You can do it. I believe in you. Believe in me? Why? <sighs> He's no Kaede, but I guess I'm happy to have someone on my side. Why? Why do you trust me, Kaito? There's a chance that I'm the cult. Idiot. I believe in you because I want to. Do I need a reason other than that? Huh? What? Listen up. Isn't that why you believed in Kaede? I mean, sure, I might get betrayed in the end, but... I believe in you. If I worry about that, I won't be able to believe in the people I want to believe in. Shuichi! Shuichi, we're still young. I can't die before I've had my first drink or gone to space. Let's do it! If you're not going to get yourself in gear now, then when? Now's all you've got. Yeah, that's Yeah, right. Kaito, I know. Keep your chin up! Yeah, that's the expression I wanted to see. That's my sidekick. He's right, I just have to do it. I have to believe in myself. I have to believe I can do this. I'm going to survive. We're going to survive together, except for the people who aren't. That's it. Maybe I don't really understand it. Maybe I don't have a reason. I don't want to live. I want to die with everyone else. Oh, I forgot about that. No, I want to live. I want to live a long life. I don't want to die. I can't die in a place like this. Never. Alright guys, so here we are in front of the Shrine of Judgment, but we will leave the class trial for the next episode. Uh, I apologize for the shorter episode. The investigation ones tend to be, but I like to have the class trial be its own thing. So, I'm gonna try and think of some hypothesis about who the killer is. I am excited to get into this, find out who Ryoma's killer is, and bring them to justice, praying it's not a character that I like. So yeah, we will save it for the next one. I hope you guys are excited for it. You know I am. So thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next one. Bye guys.